Welcome back to Bits of an Artist's Life. This is Sandy Hester. Today I have a sketchbook tour for you that I'm excited to show you. This is one that I finished May 11th, so March 24th through May 11th. I did this one. It has a mixture of travel and Patreon sessions and out and about around here in Nashville. I wanted to mention a couple things. I'm going to tell you about some supplies that I've used. I've got supplies all around me. Uh, I get asked a lot about what I do to protect pages. So basically, if I have a mixed media page like this with color pencil or soft pastels, things that when I push here or when I'm sketching here, it's going to press. I just use pieces of paper and put them in. I've pulled all that paper out because it just makes it easier to flip through. But that is what I do. I also get asked a lot why I skip pages in my sketchbooks. And that's only because we plan on making some books in the future of different things for my sketchbooks. And if we end up scanning them instead of photographing, then I need the uh, pages in between. It should help with scanning. The last thing I want to mention is that this is an art creation sketchbook. And I will have things linked below that I mention either about products or people or things like that. I will have all linked below. So let's jump into this one. I have used all kinds of things. The first page, as usual, if you've been here for a while, you know that I use the first and usually the last page or two to just be able to test materials or sometimes swatch things that maybe I'm gonna take with me. It's just a nice way to start these pages because this sketchbook, this very first page, is kind of weird the way it lays open. So it's just a nice way to start the sketchbook. And this is one of my favorite sketches. It has a lot of nice memories. It is, um, I can't remember if this is one of the original ones that I did. I don't think it is. I think I did this from an original sketch that I just did in pencil. And it was during the lockdown and Grady and I had gone to this park, the Parthenon, Centennial Park. And I just sketched and I've done a ton of paintings now from the same view. I go back a whole bunch of times. I never thought that I would want to paint the Parthenon, but I absolutely love it. There's some etchings or something up here, and then also a lot of detail at the top, and it's just really fun to abstract that. There's some fun statue and just different buildings, and there's things like this that are usually back behind me or beside me, and I will plunk things wherever I want them to be in the painting or sketch. Like to me, this is, this is mine. I don't have to replicate and be a slave to the scene. Also love like little details like this car. And even the way I sketched this lady, I was gonna paint her, but then I ended up liking how she's kind of just sketched there. And you can see where I started this guy. But then when I went to paint him, I wanted him in a different position. But leaving that kind of stuff just adds, I feel like a lot to a sketch or a painting. Here was another one that I started started building up the layers and then I, I think we left to go on a camping trip and I didn't come back to this and finish it because when I looked back at it, I really liked it like this and this kind of ghostly lady. So I just left it and I think I started another one in another sketchbook. This is us heading to that camping trip. Yeah, so I did not finish this because we were going on a camping trip. And then I like to do car sketches. So I'll build up a scene as we're driving. This is another car sketch, several car sketches right here. Another one at the Parthenon. I think this one was done from like memory and also from the other sketches that I did. This is from that same park, but from a different location kind of on the other side of the like little pond there and just observing the ducks. I can't remember if this one was done from location. I've done so many paintings now of this scene and these sweet little ducks that I can't remember what the original one was. I've just done a big canvas painting that's based off this. That's why this is here. This was at the campground just of the scene of like the little storage building that I can see from our neighbor and all their stuff. 
This was done there at the campsite too, and I was just doing this for memory and probably looking at some birds from a uh, bird book and playing around with the night scene and just layering and building up materials. Um, I have no idea what this is, probably just playing with different materials. A really quick one of our camper, quick sketch of our camper. This is of our neighbor's property, like going to the top of our mountain or midway to our mountain and looking down. And my guess is this was done maybe on that camping trip, I can't remember. Some of these I paint when I'm up there and looking down and some of them I paint from looking at other sketches I've done. This is of that same park, Centennial, at the, where the Parthenon is, but it's, um, when I'm painting the Parthenon, I'm sitting on this side looking at the Parthenon. When I'm sitting here painting all these interesting trees, the Parthenon's to my back, but I've painted from this scene so many times from either sketches I did on location, which I can tell this one was from on location when I was actually there. This is actually from our yard. One night I just sat out in our yard and painted very abstractly the mountain. It's actually just quite green, this mountain is, but because the way the sun was hitting it, it was really lit up. So I just, you know, exaggerated that. And there was a big shadow in front of me. I don't really know what this was. I was probably planning on doing something on top of this and forgot. This is, I think several of these next ones are camping trip, yes. So this is up at our campground that we go to all the time. We have a lake there and I remember really struggling with some of the paintings I did this weekend. This is one I did of that same scene of the lake, but I had been thinking about putting some of the birds like we see wood, woodpeckers up there a lot. And so I kind of made up this scene of the woodpecker and the ducks. This is of that same lake, but kind of a night. Well, no, it was 2 p.m., so it wasn't night. But it does have a night or early morning scene to look to it, doesn't it? This is just an owl that I sketched uh, with my favorite color pencil, which is a mega color. This is, it doesn't look very mega because it's so tiny, but it's a mega color, create a color in the ultramarine. And I love that color. I cannot find another color pencil with this color. I love that blue. It's one of my favorites. This is of that same Parthenon Park that I started painting from another sketch in another sketchbook, but I didn't finish it for some reason. I started putting down colors with some of my Daniel Smith watercolor sticks. I cut them in half. Anything that I can cut in half, I do, because then I can have one in the studio and one for you know, taking out. And so I was using colors like this Into Throne Blue, um, this burnt yellow ochre, which is this kind of reddish color, I think. Was it? Maybe not, no. It was this quinacridone burnt scarlet. And then this green color is undersea green. Okay, this is up at the park. So I would have done this like in the camper, probably when it was like blazing hot out, or we did have a lot of rain that weekend. It could have been raining and I sat inside and then for some reason I did not finish it. This was again of the lake and I took some photographs or photocopies of some of my bird books with me and so I was just sketching some flying birds. We had some friends join us at the campground and a fact on my Substack I have, I think it's on Substack, I have a video telling about all those sketches that I did and that whole weekend and I did a, a painting in my large, large sketchbook where I I put together all of the sketches I'm about to show you. I put them, a lot of the things in them into one painting. But um, Benji, who was six years old, he was modeling for the other young kid that was with us. One kid was fishing and the other two, one was sketching with me and then Benji was 
posing and we were doing like one minute sketches. This was done with another favorite. I need to go get the tiny, hold on. Okay, that tiny version doesn't have the info. This is a Prismacolor 70% Gris France. I think, oh no, here we go. <laughs> That's the French version, I guess. French gray, can y'all see that? I really like that pencil and sketch with it quite a bit. All these sketches are done like that. So then I posed, this is me, in case you can't tell, and Benji used my sketchbook and he drew this. And then he wanted to draw um, a rocket and some a moon and stars. And this stuff ended up in that, that painting that I told you in my larger sketchbook. Oh yeah, then he was posing as a duck for one minute. So we just sketched like that. Then we did a Build-A-Bird where we all three had a piece of paper. And I think each minute we switched sketchbooks and built these birds, which was really fun. Another one of the lake. Another one of the lake. Same thing. I think there was one night that I just pumped out a whole bunch of these real fast and was trying to be super loose. Swatching some soft pastel pencils there. I think this, oh yeah, my fingers are getting dirty. It's so funny. Start get, my fingers are always so dirty after I do like flipping through a sketchbook like this. So this is from Patreon session of Emma Carlisle's, I think. And I think what I, I had just gotten some soft pastel pencils and decided I was gonna do the whole session just using those so I could practice them. No, I take that back because I can tell this is marker. This is just the soft pastel. And that is also, I really love this bird right there. I think that's super nice. Then this was probably the same session. Yeah, nine minutes. Again, using marker and those soft pastel pencils. Same thing here. Same thing here. I think this was supposed to be maybe a hand session. We we're fo focusing on hands that month in Emma Carlisle's Patreon, but I, you can tell I completely ignored the hand. Right here, I put just the smallest little, like, there's a hand. Yeah, that session, yeah. Oh, those birds turned out nice, too. That one turned out really nice. Huh. That guy got kind of fat. Okay. Oh, I like him, too. Look at his face. That turned out nice. Okay, then this, I cannot remember what this was, but it turned out really weird. I was doing some kind of timed something, but I can't remember. And then this is just a quick sketch I did from the series that I was doing on from Family Portraits. I was painting from photographs of my family. I have a video on here of that, of all, a lot of those paintings. And I just think his little face turned out really sweet. I can tell I was using some of those soft pastels on his face. I mean, look, pretzels, blueberries. He was over at our house when he was real young, and I'd made him lunch. Another quick one from a family photo. And then this is from going to a coffee shop. I love doing this, just kind of building a scene, just sitting there for an hour or two and adding people. This guy and this guy, it's the same guy. It was an older guy, he was real hip, and he had these pink pants on and really cool glasses. And I kept trying to sketch him, but he kept noticing that I was looking at him. If you've been here for a while, you know that that's a theme. I get caught all the time. But uh, I really wanted to observe him a little better, but I really couldn't. This lady, I got to get a little more detail on her because she, I was very into her computer. She did not notice me at all. And then this was another coffee shop. Oh yeah, Grady and I rode together. He had a meeting and it was near a coffee shop. So he dropped me off and I, I didn't know how much time I had. It was pretty limited. I like how this turned out. I remember at the time kind of, I was wanting to work on this wall of glass, these mirrors, not mirrors, wall of glass, what? <laughs> They're called windows. What in the world, my brain. 
And I liked this before I added some more to it. Uh, but yeah, that was nice. It's always fun to be able to like go with Grady and do something like that. Just a bird. This is of a local park here that I go, we go hiking at a lot. It's called Beeman. And I will go down to the creek area and paint a lot. I really like this except for the value. There's not very good value change in this. Um, but there's something about a lot of it that I do like. This was another Emma Carlisle Patreon session and I loved it. I did several paintings from this actually. Uh, we were doing, was this a, oh it was a pigeon. Yeah, pigeon session which was so fun and some of the paintings I've done since I did this original one I just loved. I can't remember what this was. This could have been when I was at the zoo. I just can't remember. Okay, look at his teeth, how cute. But, oh, no, 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 I know what this was. Ah, oh, I remember, okay. This was from, I did this in the car. So we were going down to Florida, we took my mom down to Florida and I pulled up some pictures and I did this from the car. This was, was a build a scene in the car. And this was the first night there. I do have a whole video on all the sketches and paintings I did from this trip. Super fun trip, lots of great sketches, but this was while we were at dinner. And it's with that same blue that I told you about. I feel like it's just such a nice blue. This was at that same dinner. I did three sketches that dinner. This guy right here was like this big burly like biker big guy like kind of a little scary very intimidating but he was so cool looking and i wanted to get him but he kept catching me <laughs> okay look at this that little girl down there she's cracking me up i don't even remember sketching her i love little things like that though just kind of moves your eye around this was a, a poster that was on the wall at that restaurant This was from our balcony. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time talking about these because I did a whole video on them. Pool scene, my mom and Grady. Another one at the pool and these two kids at the pool. Just love. Again, I've got a whole video on all of these and a video where I've painted from all of these and put them into like a one whole sketch and you can watch me doing that. I did like a time lapse or not time lapse but I did a video of that. This was at dinner, Grady and my mom and this was a really bad one at dinner, another dinner one. There was this like sign that I was trying to capture. Grady at dinner and I can tell when I'm always I can always tell when I'm coming to the end of a sketchbook because I'm just kind of like over it. I'm ready to be done. And then I did this simple little sketch from dinner too. Nothing exciting. And then that's the end of it. But I just love filling sketchbooks like this. It gives me practice without it being something intimidating. It captures all my memories. I mean, this book right here is just... It's so important to me that this is not sold, that this is in my possession. I have memories of these sweet memories. I would have forgotten about that that day if I didn't have this. All this wonderful mark making where I'm painting, you know, taking something like this and making paintings from it. So I just really encourage you, if you don't have a sketchbook practice, to, to work on one. I mean, going to just sit at a park for an hour and working quickly where I get these loose, frantic marks and then come back and I'm so inspired by this kind of thing. In fact, I did a, a painting this week just from this and one of my other sketchbooks. Okay, that is it. What I want to do though now is share with you some of my Substack posts. In case you're not following me over there on Substack, Substack is just another platform where I'm doing very, very short videos. Very casual, not edited, not highly edited, just very simple. Usually like 10, 15 minutes or even less than that. 
and it's on all kinds of things. Things like I've got one that I'm gonna be sharing right here of how I, I made these paint markers myself, how I mix them. A lot of times it's like catching you up over the weekend of what I've painted over the weekend, but I'm gonna put a few of those here right now, two or three, so you can get an idea. And there'll be a link below if you wanna go subscribe. You can either subscribe, what that means is you'll just get an email to let you know every time when I post. It's a great way in case I take a break like I have right now, I've taken like a few weeks off because life is just crazy and I'm trying to get this um, next online class out, which is a bird painting class. But I'm oftentimes posting there once or twice a week. So I just wanted to give you a little snippet, but you can subscribe you will get emails to let you know when I post, or you cannot subscribe. You can say, no, I don't want emails, but you can still just go there and look. You won't get notified when I post, but you can go to it just like a website and go look at it. But I do highly recommend that you subscribe because if I do take a break from it, you know, if I have a busy week or I'm sick or I'm traveling and not posting there, you'll know when I do post. It's not annoying, you don't get tons of emails. It's also the place where I'm going to be announcing things first. So when there's a new class or just something that's kind of big and exciting, that's the place. Okay, let's look at those Substack little videos. Okay, the amount of mess that's going on in here right now is big time. I'm supposed to be showing y'all my soft pastels, soft pastel pencils that I got, but instead of doing that, I'm in here making a massive mess I've actually cleaned up partially, if you can believe it. Um, I have been gifted by Barbara some of these, I didn't even know you can get them, paint markers, like the Montana ones from Amazon. They look exactly like the paint markers from, Am from Montana. I cannot wait to try them. So what I did, I did little color swatches. I got all my paints out. I just used a, an array of paints. To me, it really doesn't matter. I mean, I don't want to put um, a, anything that's not like acrylic, so I don't want to put just gouache in here, but anything else to me goes. I did try to pick my most matte paints because I want to use these in my sketchbooks. Um, I probably rushed into the colors a little bit. I should have maybe given it some thought. But I'd have my paints here, I'd test it, and I did a bunch of color swatches. Here, let me show you. Trying to figure out the colors. I knew I needed some light colors, and I really like this Faber-Castell beige red, so I kind of wanted to see if I could get something similar to it. I knew I wanted a dirty blue and then kind of a neutral light. I also did kind of write my mixture, but the reality is, is this will be completely either wiped off or colored, covered with paint, so it just really doesn't matter. I'm hoping the fact that I won't probably have, oh, actually, if I put it here, I can look back at this video. Um, so this is a little bit of my flash paint, my ochre rose, some white, and a touch of oxide. I think that was flash oxide. This one I didn't write anything. I have no idea what this is. I started off with a mixture of this because I've overfilled it and then I just kept adding stuff to this. I did one that's just my Liquitec Basics Raw Umber because this is like the best neutralizer. And I added water to all these. I wanted them to be kind of thin. And then this one was my flash paint, which was cobalt blue, a little bit of ultramarine and some raw umber to dirty it because I wanted a dirty blue. I really liked this, whoops, sorry, this one right here, but I don't think I ended up with that. So we'll see, so I thought let's just give them a little go. What I did, I took the tops off and I used all these stir sticks to just stir in there instead of putting the top on, shaking it, and then testing it because that makes a total mess. So I used the stir sticks mixed it as best I could with water, trying to kind of thin it down because I can always thin it down more if I, if I need to. Okay. So I thought I would test it here with you guys and let's see what kind of colors we got. Oh yeah, I forgot about this part though. I've got to kind of pump them, bummer. If this works though, what I'll do is just kind of talk while I'm pumping, I guess. Um, actually, let me turn the camera off, let me pump. Well, so if these work, 
In fact, what if they work better than Mon the Montana? What if they don't leak at all? Most of these will leak into the tops a little bit. Um, and I could have gotten this too thick. That could be why it's taking a little while to pump. Okay, let me turn the camera off and go pump. Okay, I'm literally uh, just sweating like a maniac. That just took forever. I'm wondering if I did these too thick because they took, especially this one, I didn't think I was even gonna get it out to come out. Whew. Wow, I mean, this took some work. So it makes me think that maybe the markers aren't that great or uh, I need to thin the paint out some. We'll see, time will tell. But I really like that color. That one's the flash. Look, this is already starting to rub off. The ochre rose and touch of oxide. I like that color. Very reminiscent of, well, maybe not, <laughs> now that I did that, but I did want something kind of light. This is the one that I don't have a clue what it is. Um, golly, I need to add some water to this though. Okay, that reminds me though of a color I already have, the Liquitex parchment. Oh good, it's quite different. It's warmer. Ooh, I like that. But, is it gonna be like, oh man, I've got so much stuff everywhere. Is it too much like this? Nope. Or this? No, okay, nice. I like how it's kind of transparent also. Okay, let's see with the blue. How I did on the blue. Ooh, yeah, I wanted a dirty blue, that's nice. I think I could have dirtied it up even more, but that will be really, that's pretty. And then the other one is just raw ochre. I feel like this one I watered down, not raw oak, um, raw umber. I feel like this one I watered down the most. I thought I had this primed good, but it doesn't look like I do. Yeah, I may have watered it down too much. <sighs> Sorry. Um, okay, that'll be, if I watered it down too much, then I'll just add some more, but I would like to be able to just add a little bit and then add another color to dirty it up. So we'll see how these do. I mean, I just put straight up paint, so they could clog up, I don't know. I have added paint to my other ones and it's been fine, but I hope these work good because they were a lot cheaper. I don't have a link to share with you because I didn't purchase these, but you'll just have to look on Amazon and oof, quite excited about these. Okay, I thought I would share that with you since I'm just a complete mess. Very happy with these and I think it'll be good to add to my collection. Hope you enjoyed that. I'm gonna go wash my hands now. Hello and good morning. Well, at least it's my morning. It is Monday morning and I wanted to kind of give you a catch up on what I did over the weekend and more like from probably Thursday over the weekend. Um, I didn't think it was a lot, but as I look, I've looked at it, I did more than what I thought. So let's see where I want to start. Let me, I'll just start with this one. Let's see, this is one right here that I started in my Nice Stillman and Burn Zeta series sketchbook that I did not finish. That has been happening a lot lately. I don't know why. I was using a really large painting I have over my fireplace that I've not shown anybody yet and I never put it up for sale because I've loved it so much. But I was using it as reference to do a different one and I didn't finish it. Maybe I'll finish that today, but probably not. Usually if I don't finish, I don't finish. Let's see. Let's see, I don't wanna show you that one yet. Let's do these smaller ones. This is one that I did only in watercolor and gouache. I've been using watercolor and gouache primarily in the studio lately because, wait, did I say that correctly? Basically only using that because I'm wanting to take my very small watercolor gouache palette with me on a big trip we're taking at the end of the summer. And so I'm practicing, practicing, practicing. And uh, yeah, I did this 
park scene just on a day where I was taking a little break from the computer. Oh yeah, this was a fun day. So I think it was Saturday. I went to a local coffee shop with a friend of mine and I only got one sketch done. I think we were there for about an hour, but we were doing a lot of talking and catching up. And uh, I was painting the people behind the counter working. I did not get much in, but I do love, I love this background here. Um, I was also very, very rusty. I've not done this in a while and I could tell that I was rusty. And I also have not ever taken my watercolor gouache with me. I didn't think it would work because I thought it would not dry fast enough, but it did dry. I'm learning that I just have to work on certain sections at a time and give that section time to dry and then move over here, which actually has been really, really nice to do. Then I did several paintings or sketches this weekend from a painting of, oh, I'm gonna forget her name, Cook, something Cook. Anyways, there's a painting, it's very complex. It's of two figures, actually it's more than two figures. I think there's three figures, four figures maybe, in this like field of flowers. And I love all the brush marks. So I thought, oh, I wanna just kind of take that, make it my own and play around with brush marks with just my acrylic, not acrylic, my watercolor and gouache. So I did this, I didn't love it. It does feel a little too, little too busy and I was like, do I really like this method of all these little marks? I wasn't sure. So I did a couple more, which I'll show you in another sketchbook. May have been another one in this one. This was a sketch I did at the end of the day. I was extremely exhausted and I just desperately needed to use a color pencil. So I did a quick sketch from a scene of uh, Little Women. I think, was it on here or was it YouTube that I shared? I think it was here. Some of the paintings I've been doing of Little Women. Then this was a page I was playing around with my gouache and watercolor. And um, got out my ink tents blocks because I was thinking I'd forgotten about those and I was like, oh, that would be a great thing to take with me on the trip and in the summer for mark making because they won't melt. All the other things that I use for mark making are very melty, especially if I'm sitting in the sun. Even if it's not really hot, but if I'm in the sun, full sun, it just doesn't work. Like my Neocolor 2s, my oil pastels, what else? Yeah, color pencils even. So I was playing around with mark making on just a page, which is always fun. Then here's another version of that field with the two people. I don't remember which one of these was first, but there's another one. Then, let's see, this was from Thursday, but I did a really fun Emma Carlisle Patreon session and got out my big sketchbook, my, my uh, Moleskine sketchbook, because I only have a few pages left and I would love to do a sketchbook tour. I've been working in this one since I didn't put a date on this for some reason, but June 17, 2021. So it'd be fun to finish this and give you guys a tour. And I mainly just used my, uh, my watercolor gouache, but I did do one of these with my acrylic paints because I thought, oh, let's in this session see which one I like better. And to be honest, I can't really even tell which one I used the acrylic on and which one I used the watercolor, which is kind of nice that I can't really tell. I think that was it in this one, yes. Okay, and then I wanted to show you. Wow, was that it? That felt, oh no, no, no. I think I have this one. Ooh, I would have been sad if I forgot to show you this. Okay, here's another sketch that I did not finish. I got bored with it, but this was another a Little Women scene that I did not finish and I was using, well, I can't remember what I was using. I think acrylic paint there. Then I did this one that I love. I am working on finishing up a big series that I've been doing on canvas in the studio of all the park paintings that I've been going to and sketching for the last couple years. And I'm doing a big um, canvas paintings that I'm loving. It's gonna be so hard to sell them and give them away because I've just been loving them so much. But there's this last one that I'm doing that I'm still trying to 
figure out and it's on a really large canvas and so I did a smaller painting playing around with just some different things and I just love it. I feel like this whole series that I've done just screams like joy. It screams summer, it screams parks, it screams like childhood at the park and just joyfulness. And then here was another one I did of those figures in the um, kind of field with the flowers. I really loved this, the first layer of all of this that I did, but because I'm in a time of like playing and learning and seeing what I wanna use for our trip, and even just for the summer, I thought, well, I wanna push it. Really, pushing things is the only way that you're really gonna learn um, when, when you've gone too far, when to pull it back. So I don't mind pushing things when I know that I'm learning because I remember how I got that first layer and I can do that again easily. Like that's just natural to me, but this pushing it and trying to get like all these marks and stuff. I know that I don't like this now. I don't love like all the busyness. It's just not me or kind of forced marks. I don't know. It was still really fun to do. I love how the sun turned out. A lot of this I'm making up now because um, I've really gone away from that original painting that I saw that I was inspired by. And then that's it, yes. Okay, I think that's all I wanted to show you from this. Then last night I went to a local art store called Plaza. They've moved and I've not been to their new like um, store yet. So I went there yesterday to pick up some brushes. I've gotten these brushes. I can't even tell what they are anymore. It's completely covered up. I don't know what size, I don't know what brand, but they used to be so dark cheap. Like, I think these smaller ones were less than a dollar, but there's like 10 hairs left on this. And it's like, I can't really use it anymore. So I was like, oh, I need to go by there. I need to stock up on these brushes. Now, when I got this out to show y'all, I realized, oh, I did not get the same brush. Uh, so maybe that's why these aren't cheap anymore. Maybe they're not selling these anymore. But I don't even think the smallest is the same size. But basically, these are called Princeton. I got two zero zeros and two ones. Um, and so even the small one's not like that other one, but that's okay, it's fine. So I got those, but then what I really wanted to tell y'all about was this new sketchbook I got. I can't remember if I've heard of this brand before, Viva. But um, just this kind of, I was like, mm, this feels a little not me, but I thought, well, I'm gonna pull it out of the cover like while I was there at the store. It wasn't wrapped in like plastic, so I pulled it out. And I love the paper. Now, listen, if you're gonna get one of these, be careful, because they have an ivory and one that says cream. And I took the cream out and I was like, ugh, the paper was this thick, it was a nice color kind of, but it was just thick and like, you know how handmade, handmade paper where it's just real bumpity and, oh, I hate that kind of paper. Anyways, I was like, I think I literally shuddered when I was in the store, but this paper is really nice and the way it's bound, it lays flat. It's cream, but not crazy cream. I don't know if on the camera if you'll be able to tell. So this right here is white. So you can kind of tell a little bit of the difference. I don't know if I, I don't think that I like this format, this landscape format, but I thought it could be nice for times, like especially on our trip, where I want to just do a, maybe like two paintings. And I like a square format because I do a lot of big canvases square format. So I thought, well, I'll try it. I liked the paper enough, it's real thick. It's smooth, it's got a little bit of creaminess to it. I think it's gonna be great. So I'm excited about that. And it's kind of got this nice cover. It's not really big, it's not too heavy. And here's the info in case y'all are interested. Square ivory, 64 pages, 120 pounds, hot pressed, acid free, Viva. So there was my weekend in art form, what I did. Okay, hope y'all have a great week and I'll see y'all back here soon. Okay, that is it for this week. I hope you enjoyed those Substack videos. I hope you enjoyed the whole video actually, and I will see you back here And oh my gosh, here I do it again. Why do I always do that for two, two weeks? I'll see you in two weeks. 
two weeks. It wouldn't really be a video if I didn't do some bad singing, so there's that. <laughs>